if you would sing for us. I, you know what? Uh, it's an so off day. This is an off day. I, I Just about, you know, two, like a... The Who chorus. told it? Let's start right the there. Chorus. Who told it? We're waiting. Who told it? We're waiting. We've worked hard since 9 o'clock this morning. In the, in she the sits at the back of the bus going home. Uh -huh. I just want to make sure y'all clear. How did you know I sit at the back anyway? Because you t uh, I will put her on We're the floor. We're waiting. Pass it. She wants you. Great is sing. thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed. God's oh, hands yes. have provided. I would go to your church. Well, come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, bless God. Bless God. Bless God. I got a phone call from our um, emergency disaster service coordinator, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, Lieutenant Maxie DeBlanc, you know, uh, this is Alvin Miguez. I was just wondering if you'd be willing to go to Oklahoma. And I was floored because what had happened was I did not ask God. I just said in my heart, it would be awesome to go to Oklahoma and minister. Wow. I didn't even ask the Lord. I just said how cool it would be. And he heard me. Wow. And he gave me the desires of my heart. And then I think within less than a week, I was here ministering to God's people. and was able to be here, experience Friday's um, the storm, second wave of the storm. The second wave of the storm. Right. And it was awesome just where God had placed us, just being able to even like pray with people in the restaurant while it was a bit overwhelming for them. And the Lord kept me calm. He did. I was enjoying my ribs. Yeah. <laughs> I was. But, but it's just awesome how God just places you. He kind of pulled, he pulled me out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, and he just placed me here. So I kind of watched a couple of men who were ministering. Uh, we went out with the Roman canteen, which is a truck that's been feeding people. Right. And wow. um, I started looking at them and then the Lord was just like, this is what you need to be doing. So I began to just speak to people, hear their stories. There was one gentleman um, he and his son, his son's about 17, and he was fairly young, probably about my age, in his um, early to mid-30s, mm -hmm. and he, um, had, he had housed 15 people in his cellar during the storm, wow. and five dogs, and I was like, wow, that's a bit much, and he said as people were walking, there was a lady with her small children walking down the street trying to run away from the storm because it was already coming, wow. and he said, you know, he just grabbed it and said, get in, get in, and she got in, and there was not enough room for him and his son, and so he and his son got up out of the shelter and went and took cover in your home out of the safety of the shelter to take care of another and when I was talking to him I said that was so selfless of you you were such a hero I said no anybody would do it and the verse that came to mind was no greater love than this and a man would lay down his life for a friend I said you don't understand what you just did you don't know how many lives you've possibly saved by being so selfless it was just awesome to hear the stories and then hear Oklahoma strong and you know, kind of, you know, we're so proud of where we come from, but I'm so proud to have gotten to know these people. They are so strong and they're so resilient and they're not looking to just, you know, look out for themselves. They're helping their fellow men exactly. and women and just to be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus here is such an awesome privilege. Wow. And I'll go home so much better than I was when I got here and I'm so blessed to just have been a part of it, you know, and just so great to God. Well, thank you for your service.